You might not need your Bible. It's very familiar. The TV is my shepherd. I shall want more. It makes me to lie down on the sofa. It leads me away from the faith. It destroys my soul. It leads me in the path of sex and violence for the sponsor's sake. Yea, though I walk in the shadow of Christian responsibility, there will be no interruption, for the TV is with me. Its cables and remote control, they comfort me. It prepares a commercial for me in the presence of my worldliness. It anoints my head with humanism and consumerism. My coveting runneth over. Surely laziness and ignorance shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house watching TV forever. That's not Psalm 23, obviously, but um, somebody had some fun preaching through that uh, parody, I guess you'd call it. Last week, we, meant, we began talking about entertainment, and I was talking to um, someone yesterday, really, even in my, in my short lifetime, um, the preaching and teaching on this topic has just com has um, changed in a certain sense, or it, it has it has has to address things in a different way. Um, when I was young, younger, how do we say that? Um, almost all preaching about on this topic had to, was specifically about television. Or, and then really before my day, it was about movies and things like before and that. Um, going to the movies, I guess is what I'm saying. Going to the theater and that type of thing. And as we pointed out last week, the amount of screen time that people have in America is tremendous. It's huge. There's a, a real lot of time. And... Um, only half of that is spent with the television, with live television. And so um, there's, so, at the, so the topic is more um, entertainment, I would say, than just television. Television is a form of entertainment, and this visual entertainment, maybe I'd say, uh, we, we mentioned many different ways that, that people get entertainment la last week, and we mentioned some that were outside of the realm of, of the visual, but um, it is, it's last week with the statistics I had, it's just it, the idea of screen time. And I, I will admit, some of us spend screen time with just words on a screen. Um, we're typing or we're reading an article or something like that. Um, so some of our screen time, we're working with a spreadsheet or something like that. Um, but I would say most of us would agree that in general, Americans' screen time is not working. Um, I have an iPod Touch. I'm an old fogey. And I also, but I also have an iPad. And those things, I like to use them as tools. Um, but you all know, as well as I do, that they were not made to be tools. They were made to consume information, and most of that information being in a visual, uh, a visual way, with pictures and graphics and that type of thing. I can, you know, I can send articles, and I can send chapters of commentaries and all that type of thing to it, and I can read on it, but that's not what it was designed for with that color screen and all of that. Um, so... Entertainment and visu visual entertainment is a huge thing in our lives today, more huge, more, it's greater than it has been, I would say, at any time in, in, um, in human history. And in the context of what we're studying this summer, the idea of standards and separation from the world, we should, because it's such a big part of our lives, um, we need to have a biblical understanding. We need to think about this in a scriptural way. 
So, and I think I might have said this last week, but I think I would, we, could, we could say, I think you would agree with me if you thought just a little bit about it, that there's nothing in the Bible specifically about this type of entertainment. There's nothing in, there, in, in here specifically about this. Um, there's no scripture that says anything about televisions or, or anything like that. Obviously, they, weren't, they hadn't been invented in the, t- we're, in the time that the Bible was written. I say that, it occurs to me that there's a couple times when people put on a show of some sort, and there might be some good shows that were given, but I think of one um, uh, Herodias' daughter that put on a show for people that really turned out pretty bad, and it was from the from the what is said. It obviously was a very sensual um, show, but there's doesn't there's that still is just gathering a principle from a historical event. So the Bible doesn't specifically say don't watch television or don't own an iPad or don't own a Samsung Galaxy or Note or whatever the whatever the latest, the Bible couldn't keep up with it because it's like every year there's a new one. And so you'd be okay. I mean, if it said, the Bible said don't own an iPad, you would be allowed to own an iPad Air or an iPad Mini or an iPad Pro, but just not an iPad. That's the way we would think, right? So in this, in this um, category of thought, we really have to be governed by principles. And so we're going to talk about some of those. And um, I want to, again, mention a few things of the, about the characteristics of what we're talking about. And it's, it's I think I'm, being, I'm afraid that I'm being a little vague uh, because it's more than just television. But if you, are, if you think with me, you'll understand. If I say TV, I also mean YouTube, Vimeo, um, DVR, um, you know, whatever, whatever, it's that visual um, entertainment type of medium. It might not be, um, we might not think that we're watching it for entertainment purposes, but it is entertaining. Case in fact would be um, even the news. Okay, we would say, well, I'm just watching the news. I'm just going to sit down and watch the news. Well, the news, if you're watching the news, that people that... Uh, produce that know that it has to be entertaining. And so they're only going to tell you the news that is entertaining. They're not going to tell you the news that's important because if they don't if they don't tell you the news that's entertaining, you might switch to another channel and then they won't be able to charge as much for the commercials that co- that have to come at a certain point in time. So any any visual communication with pictures and that and sound and all of that is, is very much so an entertainment medium. So let's, let's take a few characteristics and, and think about this. First of all, and this is not in any specific order, but the first one I'm going to mention is that this medium, watching this, basically is mentally passive. When we sit down to watch something, our brains turn off. Maybe they don't turn off completely because they're processing what we see, but we're not working. Um, to read something, you have to work. To say something, you, you have to work. But when we're watching something, we're just kind of sitting there and, it's, and it, we're absorbing it. We're not, our, our, it's mentally uh, passive. It's image focused. Um, all of us have read a book, I think, I hope, when you read, do you see things in your mind? We do. Your, your mind works to create that image. When you watch something, you don't see anything else than what somebody else has already determined is the visual representation of what they're trying to show. So, that, this, this is, so it's, it's much less brain intensive. If all you do is watch, 
if, if everything that you learn, you learn by watching, and everything that you know, you, you know, everything, all the news you receive, you, you receive it by watching. All the, if all the preaching that you received, you just watched something, and if, if um, you know, I'm not saying these things are evil, but there's, there's the Bible app that tells stories with pictures and music and all of that, um, or the Bible for kids. It's, it's really neat. I don't see any problem with it necessarily, but I don't want my kids that to be the only way they learn anything. Okay, so, but the point is, if we just learn through, vi through visual rep representations and all of that, our mind, we're not using our mind. We're not stewarding our mind. God has given us a brain and a mind, and he expects us to use it. Um, so it's, we're to love the Lord with our mind, but this type of absorbing and, and consuming things uh, is very, uh, uses very little of our mind. Actually, along with it being passive, someone else is doing your thinking for you um, most of the time. We can, if we are extra uh, alert, we could watch something and criticize it. But, the, but most of the time, we just absorb it. And just, hopefully that's making, if you're, you're watching the news or watching um, some type of a, even an educational show, uh, one of the things about pictures and, you know, if I say something, you say, well, I wonder if that's true. But if I show you a picture with it and say that it is true, then you say, well, I saw it with my own eyes. Okay, and, and, and the, just the idea that you can see it with your own eyes Puts, pulls your defenses down and you don't think about, you don't think really much about what uh, you're seeing. The thinking is being done for you. I'm not going to go all into this too far, but there's plenty of ways that you can represent something that's not actually true. You can represent things to people's eyes. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's stories, when they first came out, there's stories about news reporters in the Civil War that rearranged bodies on a battlefield so that they could so that the picture that they put with their story supported what they were saying. Okay, and that's long, that's 150 years ago. Um, so it's not like um, the people that are presenting this to you, they have a certain thing that they want you to think and they present it in such a way so that you, they are doing the thinking for you. Okay, we need to move along. So, but um, visual, entertainment, news, whatever is, is passive mentally, um, primarily passive, it, the thinking is being done for us, it's image focused. Then another thing is that it, it tends toward, and not everything that you see is going to be it, characterized by this list, but because our, of the way our world is, these visual, this visual way to consume things tends toward this. It tends toward sensuality. It tends toward innuendos. It, Tends toward materialism, perversion, violence, even socialism. That's just because it's, it's, that's the way our world wants to think, which is pretty opposite of the way God wants us to think. Um, suggestive clothing styles. Um, and let me I just point out, I think pro probably many of you have noticed this. Maybe you didn't realize that you noticed it. But in cable news outlets, the, the, I think the leader still in cable news outlets is Fox News. One of the main reasons for that is that their women anchors dress suggestively. It is. You might say, well, no, they're, they're leading because they're fair and balanced. Well, that's, a, that's just an, that's a, that's a marketing scheme also, okay? But having their anchors dress in a certain way gets, they have more male viewership than any other news program. You know, I'm just saying, shouldn't use that phrase, right? It's, I'm, I'm chick, or I'm with it, because I use these, um, chick is not the right word. That's my dress. <laughs> that was when I was dressing. I don't want to ch dress chickly, that's for sure. Anyway, I'm not with it. I don't even know what terms to use. 
So, but, but really, and, and, and I, I, I'm, not, I'm not afraid to, I purposely use that news as an illustration. That's just the news. That's the thing that most of us would say, well, I'm just going to watch the news. The news is brought to us visually, purposely to be entertaining, to be visually stimulating. Um, other things there, cursing and profanity, you probably won't hear that much of that on the news, but you listen to enough cursing and profanity, you're going to start thinking cursing and profanity. You are. You say, well, I would never say a word like that. Let me just give you a short uh, story. When I was in high school, 10th, 10th, 11th, 12th grade, something like that, we went to a wrestling camp, and we went to the Iowa State University wrestling camp, we were in this wrestling camp with, with wrestlers from, I don't know where they were from, but they were not all from Fairhaven. And I learned a real lot. Learned wrestling very well. But, of course, I was paired up with some other guy because we're paired up by weight class, and we'd learn to do a, or be shown how to do a certain move. And it's just, a, it's not a whole match. You just do this move. It takes about 10 seconds. You start, you do it, and then you do it again. Then the other guy does, you do five or six reps of it each. Well, whether, whether my partner was doing the move or I was doing the move, every rep, every rep, he cussed. It's like, oh, blank, oh, blank, or oh, that was good, blank. You know, I, I messed it up, blank. Everything. I'm not saying, I don't know that I've ever um, cussed. I, I've said those words because, and the, oh, I said those words. I mean, if you're in a conversation with somebody and say, so and so said this, that's different than cussing. Okay, it's not just a loose. Anyway, we, that would be another topic for our uh, summer. But, um, but I haven't just let one go, but I've thought them. After one week of just hearing it all the time, it's just like you, 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 I don't know, I don't remember a specific instance, but you, you kick something with your foot in the middle of the night, and all of a sudden, what word comes to mind? The ones that you hear. So, just because, when, if, you, if you're filling your head, if, if lots of times you're hearing people just use profanity and blasphemy and cursing, simply, they're teaching you how, they're teaching you where those words fit into popular conversation. Um, and if you, really, if you think about it, they don't fit in. The next time you hear somebody cuss, think, did they really mean that? I mean, it's, I mean, those words do have dictionary meanings. They're not just profanities. Somebody says blank, you think, did you really want to talk about that right now? Uh, I mean, whatever. The, no. So, um, but, but the, the entertainment teaches us how, we should, how to use those words. Um, humanism, crime. Some people say, well, I, you know, the news, I don't like the news, but I, my thing is sports. Well, what is sports filled with? I, li I enjoy sports, but if you're going to watch sports, you're going to watch the post-game show, and you're going to watch all of this, you're going to listen to the announcers talk about it's. While there is a struggle taking place there, and there is definitely tremendous talent and ability there, there's an awful lot of man worship going on there. You know, this team can't live without so-and-so, or this guy, he's so, he's so great. There's also the weirdest statistics you've ever heard of there, because they have to find, you know, I heard a statistic this morning. This was a political statistic. Uh, somebody's favorability ratings with this, this particular group of people. It was like college graduates that are women that are something else. It's like so, so, I mean, and, and if so-and-so doesn't do better with that group of people, this is really telling that they're going to do bad in the election or something. I was like, wow, you know, I thought we had an electoral college. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, but this type, this medium because it, it, it works best if it's entertaining and because mankind is fallen, fallen mankind loves fallen entertainment. 
And so it tends toward that. It's going to get us. Our flesh likes certain things. Just because we're saved doesn't mean that we don't have flesh. Okay? So it likes certain things. Uh, the world that's not saved, they love fleshly, worldly, thi worldly things. And so that type of stuff is built into this type of medium because it has to, it's in a, it's in a competitive world, and in order to get us to watch it, it has to appeal to something, and it knows that that is what's going to appeal. Um, so, and, all, and, and that just, that's, I've already said it, but th so this type of presentation tends toward being worldly. Um, another characteristic of it is that it's time intensive. It's time intensive. It just takes a lot of time. Normally, it takes up more time than what we thought it would. I think the way I've been talking about it is you understand that, I, that I, there's nothing in the Bible, and I don't think there's even principles in the Bible that would tell us you should never, you know, it's a sin to watch something. I, I mean, the, phys, the physical device. I'm sure there's thing, there, there are things that you can end up watching that's a sin to do, but whether it's, a, you know, a TV or something, it's not a sin to own or watch a TV. All of you have probably done that, though. I'm going to watch the news, or I have, I, I like Wheel of Fortune, or whatever. There's, everybody has their different, I'm just going to watch this game. I'm only going to watch, you know, baseball tonight, whatever it is. How many of you normally, or, or how often, have we ended up watching the next show, and the next show, okay? So that shows. Somebody sends you a YouTube video, right? It might, be something in, it might be something worth watching, or it might be just something funny. And there's nothing wrong with watching something funny. I'm, I don't, let me say that, give you that impression. But you watch something funny, and then there's that big list on the side there, right? Okay, and, and depending on how your browser is set up, if you don't stop it within about 10 seconds, something else is just coming, whether you ask for it or not. The next thing up, and, and then, and pretty soon it's like an hour and a half, and you're like, oh, dinner's not ready, or whatever, depending on what your ne next responsibilities are. It's, it's, it's um, addictive. It is. It, it catches you. I, th there are probably some people that can't live without watching something. So, but, but even not, not so much as, you know, <laughs> shaking until you watch the TV. If you, if you just sit down and watch something, it catches you. And in, in a certain sense, it keeps you for a while. Um, it can. It has that ability. Um, I understand that this is more of a man, a man, a male trait than a lady's trait, but... You know, you just you get the remote control and you just you just flip. There's nothing there. You go all the way through all 300 stations, and there's nothing on one of them. You're like, oh, I don't want to watch that. But what do you do? Well, it's been so long since you started. You get, you 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 you, watch, you go through it again. Hopefully, maybe something will interest you this time, and you just keep going and just keep going. We can laugh about that, and there's nothing. I mean, you should, it is funny, but at the same time. That just shows the, the power that this medium can have. It's, um, it, can, it can be controlling. And it can steal time from us that, could, that the Lord would have us use in other better ways, for sure. So, that's just some more characteristics of this type of uh, medium, um, communication device. What do others say about it? Well, um, for decades, let's just, for decades, preachers and pastors have preached against television. I'm not going to, some of them have, you know, there's a lot of variety in how far the specifics of what they've said our response should be to it. Um, for years, we have um, preached here that you shouldn't own a television. There's probably a lot of church members in our, in our church that still we don't own a television. But technology has changed, hasn't it? 
Okay, we, I have an iPad mini. I have a computer monitor. And lo and behold, YouTubes can just, they just appear out of nowhere. I don't know how they get in my screen. You know? No, right, I mean, so, so a lot of, even in the days when we would preach against television, people would say, well, television is not the problem. That box is not the problem. It's what's coming through the box, right? Now, if you, there are, there, there's, there's something to be said for not having a box there. If you, if you are not the type of person that could only watch it once a week or only watch it at certain times and stop when you needed to, is, it's not a bad idea not to, have a, not to have a television. But it's not the television that's the problem. It's us. <laughs> It's our response to what comes through the television or what comes through the digital device or what comes wh wherever, whatever, in whatever way it is. And all I'm saying is that godly people for decades have preached against or warned Christians about this medium. And really, that's, that's all I'm doing this morning also. Um, we mentioned a few verses last week. <clears throat> Psalm 101.3 talks about not set, I will set no wicked thing before mine eye. Um, we mentioned Psalm 1, 1 and 2 last week. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. If you're watching something, most likely it's ungodly people that are telling you stuff. And they are thinking for you, and you are just absorbing their thinking. Um, Proverbs 4 14 through 17. We didn't mention this one last week. Let me just read it quickly. You can write it down if you can get there as fast as me. Proverbs 4, 14 through 17. Enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it and pass away. For they sleep not except they have done mischief and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. 1 John 2, 15 through 17, love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Um, I think I just misquoted that a little. But the, the world, and the world controls most of what we consume in a visual way. And it's going to want us to love it. I'm not, I'm not saying that if you watch something, you know, that's evidence that you love the world. But if you consume it enough, and you agree with it enough, you're going, you're, the way you think is going to be worldly, because, and you're going to love the things of the world. So, I've already said this, but I would say it is not a sin to watch something, to watch TV, to watch something with a screen, etc. We can't, we can't come to that conclusion by looking at Scripture or even the principles of Scripture. But I would say that understanding the, understanding the medium demands that we, we have some standards or we, we set up some guards against um, consuming too much of it or consuming the wrong stuff that is there because it is very, very powerful. Um, I mentioned some people do not have a television in their home. That does cut down on the availability of, of visual entertainment. Um, with smartphones and all that, I'm sure it has, it has risen. But... That could be something that you... I'm just going to mention different types of standards. I don't know that there's any one in part... I, I don't, I'm not saying that all of these are what somebody should have. You, in this area, I'm going to be a little flip-floppy or flimsy. You have to honestly think about your life, the situations you're in, and determine some standards that you're not going to do. Now that you're going to follow. Um, now, if you set those standards and you're the only one that knows what those standards are, it's very easy to change them. <laughs> if, you, if you say, I shouldn't do this, then you need to talk to some people about that. 
I'm going to keep this standard. Technology, te technology will change, and you'll, this is a standard that will have to change because technology changes. Um, so, but some people, you might say, I only watch certain, uh, or I would only watch certain channels when I'm alone. Okay? When I'm alone, I only watch certain channels, or I only watch at certain times when I'm alone, or I don't watch when I'm alone. Um, would only watch videos for special occasions. Okay, there's videos. Are, I mean, they're nice. They keep everybody's attention, and pretty much everybody calms down and watches it. Their brain turns off, their body turns off, and they just watch it. Okay, but if you, if that's how you maintain order in your home, you're hurting your kids. You're hurting yourself. Okay, so. You shouldn't, you, you should say, I'm, we're only going to watch something for special occasions. Um, I've heard of families that, you know, their, their daughter had a bunch of friends over and they watched, they just, wa they, they didn't have a TV, but they rented a, a, a TV and whatever. And this is back in the day uh, when you needed to rent a TV and a VCR, okay? And they watch, they watch movies till two o'clock in the morning. That's not wise, okay? Um, you shouldn't, and this is, this is, translate this into the present time, okay? But you shouldn't, in, in those days, you would rent a television and you, you, maybe you owned a VCR, but of course you couldn't play anything on it if you didn't have a television. You'd rent a, a TV so you could watch something. It shouldn't be cheaper to just go ahead and buy it because you're renting, you know, so often that you might as well just buy a television, okay? So... Now, we don't need to do that. We have computer monitors now. But I guess it just the rate of, consume, of consumption should be low. We're consuming things from the world. Uh, we shouldn't let videos babysit our kids. There's nothing wrong with your kids interacting with, with an iPad or something like that. But it shouldn't be the go-to. shouldn't be the thing that every... You know, that you just do all the time, you should reserve that for grandparents. <laughs> you should have to work with your kids. Um, so, um, something that, that, we've, that Christians have um, taught for a real long time is that you shouldn't go to theaters. Um, the idea there, when you go to a theater, you, are, you know that your money is supporting this huge, whatever you want to call it, system that is very much against God and against Christian principles. So you're going there and you're supporting that. Another, another thing is that you, people see you going there. Now, as you say, well, that's kind of hypocritical. You won't be seen watching it, but you will watch it at home. It, you might call it hypocritical, but at the same time, when you go there, you're, you're, you don't, people don't know whether you're, what you're watching of the uh, 16 things that the theater is showing. Um, so that is, that is a standard that people have held for a long time, that you shouldn't go to a theater. At the same time, if you're at um, you know, the museum, and you're and you want to and you're watching something at the Omnimax. People would say, "Well, that's a theater. That's kind of educational, and it's not. You are learning something. You can only learn a certain amount in a visual way." I agree. I need to stop. But anyway, um, for time's sake, I'd like to finish this though. Broadway shows. You know, people, you know, what is Broadway show gonna, gonna going to? Uh, try to get you to see, think about. A secular thinker has said the only thing that you should watch is things that you expect to be, you should only watch for entertainment. Because if you're watching something for news or information, really you're only being entertained. Now that's just a secular, secular person. But I would say it's not a bad idea. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not giving any um, things that you must do. 
But we need to think about this because it is so, it permeates our culture so much. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for your word. We pray that we would have discernment. That's really what we need. We need to be able to, to understand your word. We need to grow in our knowledge and understanding of your word. We need your wisdom. And um, we pray that we would be more Christ-like and that we would be able, be able to have a strong Christian testimony, um, have a strong uh, relationship with you, and not allow these entertaining things to, um, to draw us away from you or to even pull us into uh, sin. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.